generally I'd be a little bit skeptical about this sort of thing, but I, I honestly like Jim Farley. And you know what, Jim's planning on using Cato's new battery technology in the new Ford Ranger pickup truck, meaning the Ranger pickup truck could potentially charge up to 600 kilowatt charging speeds and have extremely high energy density batteries that are affordable, meaning the Ford Ranger electric truck could be as good as what Jim Farley is saying. And if it is, well, I would consider buying one because we have the Ford Ranger here in Australia. In fact, the Ford Ranger is a global Ford vehicle. It's kind of exciting, actually. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Ford F-150 Lightning. If they sold those in places like Thailand, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, places where people love pickup trucks and buy lots of them, if they sold them in those countries, they would sell really well. But the Ford Ranger is really popular. In fact, I believe the Ford Ranger is the best ute you can buy. I'm talking pickup truck, the best, you know, smaller sized pickup truck you can buy anywhere in the world. I think it's great. And reviewers say the same thing. I mean, the BYD Shark is, you know, it's a plug-in hybrid and it's gonna, to be honest, cannibalize Ford Ranger sales because it's so cheap. In fact, the new BYD Shark plug-in hybrid pickup truck is as cheap as a base model Ford Ranger, literally a base model, right? It's crazy. Like BYD must be losing so much money selling that vehicle, but they're willing to do that in order to cannibalize Ford Ranger sales. Well, Jim Farley's saying, hey, hang on a minute, hold my beer. The BYD Shark, it's a plug-in hybrid. It's severely compromised. It's exceptionally heavy. It is very heavy. We're going to bring out a fully electric Ford Ranger. It's going to have a very high energy density. And that's why I think he's so excited about it. He's not really that excited about the Ford F-150. He's really talking about the Ranger. And those are the reasons why I believe it's going to have an 800 volt architecture. It sounds like Ford have been working with Cadle to use their next generation lithium ion phosphate batteries, meaning it'll have very much higher energy density batteries than existing LFP batteries that you can buy in vehicles and the potential to charge it up to 600 kilowatt fast charging. So you can see why he's excited because this is going to be a really good vehicle. So when will it go into production? Well, Ford is saying it'll happen in 2027. And the biggest reason for that is Ford need to build the battery factories. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm serious here because Ford sell, you know, they sell the Ranger, not just in all those countries I mentioned, they sell the Ford Ranger in America. And unless you build the batteries in America, then, um, well, it's very, going to be very hard to actually sell these vehicles in America, period. So Ford have said publicly they want to do what Tesla and General Motors plan on doing, which is license Cato's battery technology and build build the battery factories, build these you know production lines for these batteries in the US. Now, if that doesn't happen, then Ford will obviously use newer generation NMC, so nickel manganese cobalt batteries using, I believe, silicon anodes, which will increase the energy density and, and, and allow a pickup truck or a ute, you know, with something like a 100 kilowatt hour size battery to get potentially 400 miles of range, which I think that will happen. Ford haven't said much about the truck, but they're saying it's going to be Ford's new, it's going to be built on their new architecture and will have better charging. It will cater to customers who want more for their money, more range, more utility, and more usability. I finally actually talked about the electric Ford Ranger during the third quarter earnings call. He said, I've seen a lot of game changing products, but the mid-sized truck has got to be one of the most exciting. He went on to say it was going to be an incredible package in a segment Ford knows extremely well. Now it's true that Ford know pickup trucks well. They build great pickup trucks. They're bloody fantastic. I mean, if you say otherwise, you're just a hater because Ford do. The Ford Ranger, it's the industry standard. There's no question. In all the reviews from basically every journalist that does comparison reviews, the Ford Ranger wins nearly all of them. The Ford F-150 Lightning, it's, you know, it's not so good. It's a good truck, don't get me wrong. It's not bad, but I mean, Ford's CEO mentioned one of the compromises of the F-150 Lightning, which was its charging speed. Very big battery, right? but only 150 kilowatt max charging, meaning that very big battery is gonna take you a very long time to charge if you're on a road trip. So that's one of the compromises. But the new Ranger is said to not have these compromises. And I think that's why Jim Farley is so excited about it. Now, another thing is because the Ranger is significantly smaller than the F-150, you can put a smaller battery pack in it and still get good range. 
Farley said there's a global price war fueled by overcapacity and a flood of new EVs and massive compliance pressure. He went on to say that no automaker is immune from the challenges and they're expecting roughly 150 new EV nameplates, of basically 150 new EV brands to hit North America by the end of 2026. This has resulted in some automakers slashing prices and embracing a race to the bottom mentality, but Farley doesn't like this. He says very aggressive lease tactics carry huge residual risk and can damage brands. Now, to be fair, Ford have discounted the F-150 Lightning massively. So, you know, let's not be hypocrites. Ford lowered prices for the 2025 Mustang Mach-E, I believe by about 2,000 US dollars. So the base price Mustang Mach-E has a lithium-ion phosphate battery and it's very cheap. I mean, you're talking $40,000 for what's a, a pretty good vehicle, but is it better than a Tesla Model Y? Well, most people don't think so. Anyhow, Ford say that they've, able to, they've been able to reduce their cost of manufacturing the Mustang Mach-E by $5,000 per unit over the past 24 months, meaning they will save $1 billion on EVs this year. But keep in mind, um, they plan to lose $4 billion on their EV segment this year. That said, Ford say that they are laser focused on cost and getting leaner as a company. Now, even though Ford are going to lose like $4 billion on EVs this year, that does include investment. So, you know, it's not so bad. And the truth is at least Ford are the only company in the world actually telling the truth. I mean, the only, you know, legacy automaker telling the truth. Now, they're telling the truth because they intentionally separated the EV division from the rest of their company in order for us to get these honest financials. Ford telling us, okay, we're losing this much money. We're losing $50,000 on every EV we sell based on what it's costing us right now. So investors can go, oh, okay, I understand. Full clarity, full, you know, full disclosure. So, you know, kudos to Ford for doing that. Because no one else is doing that. Is General Motors doing that? No. Is Stellantis doing that? No. Is a Volkswagen group doing that? No. Is Mercedes-Benz doing that? No. Porsche? No. None of them are doing that. None. None. Ford is the only company doing that. So you've got to give them credit for that as well. I like what I like where Ford's heading with this, but I do think they need to speed up. They need to speed up. I know it's going to cost them a lot of money. They're going to lose more money, but they need to make more. The reason the EVs cost so much to manufacturers is because they don't make enough of them. Honestly, economies of scale. How the heck is Tesla making 16% profit margins when their rivals like Volkswagen Group are making, what, 3.5%? They make so many and they don't make millions of different models, right? Volkswagen Group, what do they got? Like 120 different models, right? Tesla, they're making more profit than the entire Volkswagen Group with pretty much only really two models, two worldwide models. So I think this whole mentality, I mean, same thing with Apple, right? Apple have a very, very limited number of phones you can buy. I think that makes sense. So really, in my opinion, these automakers need to make more of a, a smaller number of products. For example, Ford, you know, maybe focus on uh, electric pickup trucks, F-150, Ranger, you know, maybe they need the F-250 for work trucks, but a smaller number of vehicles manufacture more of them, make them electric. And I think they can actually be onto a winner. But the question here is, is Ford going to be around long enough? Are they going to go bankrupt? You know, could they potentially need a bailout from the US government within the next few years? To be honest, it's extremely likely. Thanks for watching.